And good morning, holy people. Welcome to St. John Paul II on the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Good to have you all with us. We want to welcome anybody who's visiting or here for the first time. We'll start over here in this section. Do we have any guests, first timers over here? What about in this section here? Where are you guys visiting from? Just moved here? Okay, well, welcome to St. John Paul II. You caught us on Name Tag Sunday and then also Donut Sunday. So stick around after Mass and have a donut or two and a cup of coffee. Uh, any other guests? What about over here in this section? And in our last two sections, where are you guys visiting from? From Lexington? Okay, great. Well, good to have you back with us. Great. And any others? Let's welcome all of our guests who are with us here today. <laughs> to answer the most asked question, I'm, I'm doing fine. Uh, actually doing pretty good. I'm about 90% of where I was before the surgery and all that went after that. So uh, I'm doing okay. And I still don't need any food. So thank you. <laughs> I'm going to start taking this stuff out of the freezer probably in two weeks. So uh, tomorrow is Labor Day, uh, so we will have no noon mass tomorrow on Labor Day. A reminder to all liturgical ministers that we're asking you to attend an evening of formation. This is for new and returning Eucharistic ministers, hospitality, lectors, servers, cantors, etc. There's a sign-up sheet in the uh, information desk back there in the back, so if you can sign up and let us know that you're planning on attending. Our choir program will be starting on Monday, September 18th. We'd like to see this ministry grow. You don't have to have previous experience. Uh, we take all levels of singers, even those who've never been in a choir before. See Katie Halter with any questions or sign up at the information desk. We have two spots open for Eucharistic Adoration, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. That's the uh, better spot of the two. And Friday mornings at 4 a.m. Uh, so if you're available for either of those times, you can contact Joan Duggar. Starting next weekend, our Eucharistic Revival Core team will be registering people for a seven-week study on the Eucharist. That's going to begin the first week of October. And Michelle, where are you? Uh, how many different time slots are there available? Four. Four different options on time slots. So we're trying to make that available. We'd love to encourage all of you to attend uh, that uh, seven-week study. We will have prayer ministry after Mass. If you have any prayer needs, come up and see Kathy, and she'll pray with you. At this time, I invite you to find a prayer partner by introducing yourself to one other person and then praying for that person throughout this Mass. So I invite you to find a prayer partner at this time. And I thank you for doing that. And we just invite you to take a moment now and quiet ourselves as we prepare to celebrate our liturgy this morning. to you all the day long. O oh Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. Good morning, everyone. 
Welcome once again to the Catholic community of St. John Paul II. Please stand and join us in our opening song, Anthem. We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are greed. Then where can we stand justified in what can we believe? No one else but he who suffered, nothing more than he who rose, who was justice for the poor, who was rage against the night, who was hope for peaceful people, who was light. We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are greed. Then how are we to stand in all this world of bended knee? In nothing more than barren shadows, no one else but he could save us. Justice for the poor, who was rage against the night? Who was hope for peaceful people? Who was light? We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are creed. Then shall we not stand empty at the altar of our dreams when he promised us ourselves who mark time against tomorrow, who are justice for the poor, who are rage against the night, who are hope for peaceful people, who are light. We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another, we are to tomorrow while we are for him today we are sign we are wonder we are sower we are seed we are harvest we are hunger we are question we are green in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and with your spirit Thank you. And indeed, we are called and we are chosen. And some of us are called to be prophets in a world that needs to hear from prophets. And so as we gather together, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word and your sacrament, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us all to the joys of heaven. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks. 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Go away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seen. on us. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of I invite our young people forward for our children's liturgy of the word open to kindergarten through grade five. They'll go out and hear the gospel message at a level they can better understand. And then they'll come back and join us for the liturgy of the Eucharist. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come, oh children, come, come and love the Word of God. Come, oh children, come, come and learn the Word of God. Come, oh children, come, come and love the Word of God. Glorify Him, glorify Him, and love the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord.
do. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I see. Like the earth parched, lifeless and without water, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with exalted lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect, the word of the Lord. Your one. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to their conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to take a moment and say a prayer for your prayer partner at this Mass. Thank you for doing that. Bill was a young pharmacist working in a drugstore with two other pharmacists. One was a chief pharmacist, the other was a middle-aged pharmacist, middle-aged woman pharmacist. The chief pharmacist was retiring and offered Bill the position of chief pharmacist. Now Bill was flattered, but he was also aware that the woman pharmacist was an excellent pharmacist and had been there many more years than he had. When he voiced his concern, the chief pharmacist said, well, she's married and she doesn't need the money as much as you do. Bill turned down the promotion and he told the chief pharmacist his reason was that he felt it was unjust to promote him over the woman pharmacist. Well, he got fired. It took him a while before he found another job, but when he did and when asked if he would do it again, he didn't hesitate. Of course I would, he said. I have two young daughters, and I don't want them to grow up in a world with this kind of injustice. Susan B. Anthony was born on February 15, 1820. She was an American social reformer and a woman's rights activist, and she played a pivotal role in the women's suffrage movement. She was also an anti-slavery activist, and during the Civil War, she and another woman founded the Women's no Loyal National League, and they conducted the largest petition drive in the United States history up to that time, collecting over 400,000 signatures in support of the ab ab abolishment of slavery. After the war, they initiated the American Equal Rights Association, which campaigned for equal rights for women and also for African Americans. Soon she began working on the right for women to vote. And in 1872, she was arrested in her hometown of Rochester, New York, for voting in violation of laws that allowed only men to vote. She was convicted in a widely publicized trial. And although she did not live to see it, her grassroots efforts eventually led to the passage of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, giving women the right to vote in 1920. So let's put all this in biblical terms. Bill, the pharmacist, Susan B. Anthony were prophets. Like Jeremiah, they each took a stand for justice and they each paid a price. Often, prophets are met with rejection even amidst their family and their friends. Bill recounts that after he had made that decision and after he got fired, people would dispense with the niceties when they met him. It wasn't, Bill, how you doing? How are your kids doing? Anything like that. It was, why in the world did you do that? Why did you give up that extra pay? It doesn't make sense to me. Did you think about your family? This is exactly what Jeremiah is doing in our first reading. He is hurt. And so he cries out to God, 
You duped me, Lord, and I let myself be duped. And then he continues, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Now, some of you might say, well, you shouldn't talk to God that way, as if we're afraid we might hurt God's feelings or that God might somehow become angry with us and leave us. But that's not what Jeremiah thinks. This great prophet encourages us to voice our minds to God, to blow off steam, if you will, to voice even our discontent at times with God. Because what this allows us, it allows us to keep the lines of communication open with the very one who created us to be prophetic to begin with. That's the situation Jeremiah finds himself in. He's not by nature a courageous man. Being a prophet is not easy, and it cost him a lot. He is arrested and shackled outside the temple. He is laughed at and mocked by the very people God has sent him to challenge. Prophetic voices like Bill the pharmacist, prophetic voices like Susan B. Anthony, prophetic voices like Jeremiah remind us that the role of prophet is not easy. In fact, it's usually pretty hard. But prophetic voices are needed today as much as ever. Those who speak out for the life of the unborn, those who speak out for the plight of immigrants, those who pray at penitentiaries where executions occur, and those who speak out against the treatment of the LBGT community even within our own church. Many times, prophets like Jeremiah can't help themselves. When they experience God's call, they can't help but follow it. You are too strong for me, Jeremiah says. You are too strong for me, Lord, and you triumphed. God's word, he says, was burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. One of the lessons that I think we can learn from people like Bill and Susan and Jeremiah is to listen quietly for the call of God deep within ourselves and to ask ourselves, as St. Paul talked about in our second reading, are we conforming ourselves to this present age or are we being transformed by the renewal of our mind? And when we answer that question, then we can respond to God's call, even if there are costs. Have you ever had to take an unpopular stand like Jeremiah or Bill or Susan because you just knew it was the right thing to do and then had to pay a price? Perhaps you lost a friend. Maybe you lost the respect of somebody you respected. Maybe even you became alienated from your own family. In our first reading today, Jeremiah is a good example of what it means to be the bearer of God's word, even when that stand is unpopular. It costs us to be prophets. It can cost us emotionally. It can cost us spiritually. Sometimes it can cost us financially. But as we hear in the gospel, prophecy doesn't stop with the Old Testament. Indeed, Jesus challenges us to be willing even today to take up our cross and follow him, to be prophets even today in his name. And just as it led Jesus to the cross, so too it might lead us to unpleasant situations so that the people of God might hear the fullness of God's love in this world. Responding to Jesus in our daily lives will cost us. Bearing that in mind, let us remind ourselves of the word of the psalmist in our responsorial psalm today. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God, because being connected to God in all things and in all ways will allow us to pick up our cross and follow him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living in the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. And with confidence now, we place our prayers of petition before our God. For the church throughout the world, that we may be signs of God's mercy, welcome, and compassion to all who have been outcast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may provide wise leadership and support laws that are just and fair for all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who experience violence or abuse, for those who suffer through illness, addiction, or grief, and for all who need healing of mind, body, or spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the St. John Paul II parish community, that all will hear the call of the Holy Spirit to meet in this house every week and be active members of this faith family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may rest in the arms of our loving God, we remember especially Leona Stillings, mother of Chris Sams. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Amelia Brodus, and for the deceased members of the Forbes and Holt Gray families who are the intentions of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our prayer partners at this Mass, for the prayers of our parish, and for all that we hold in the quiet of our hearts. Through the intercession of St. John Paul II and all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers we present to you this day. Grant what you find good in them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our altar for the celebration of the Eucharist, I invite you to come forward in gratitude with your monetary gifts and those for our local food pantry. Please join us in singing our offertory song, Prayer of St. Francis. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. channel of your peace where there's despair in life let me bring home where there is darkness only light and where there's sadness ever joy oh master So much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And, lift them up to the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal God. Although you have no need of our praise, yet is our thanksgiving itself your gift. Our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we too praise you, and with joy we proclaim. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Charles, our Bishop, with all the bishops, all the clergy, and all your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John Paul II, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. As Jesus taught us, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins then, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. And let's share with one another now a sign of Christ's peace.
And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ preserve us all unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
won the love that we share. Won our hope in despair. Won the cross that we Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you, age to age. As the eagle flies to the heaven above, on wings of God will bear you all. Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you, age to age. As the lilies are. Splendor we find in the love God gives. Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you, age to God will lighten your burden and give you rest. Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you, age to Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you by serving our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you ever see me do the prayer sitting down, it means that I have one more announcement to make. I didn't see Sarah at the beginning of Mass, but Sarah Myers, our fifth grade teacher at St. John Paul II School, and she was just voted best teacher in Clark County. So congratulations, sir. Now, I don't know what that says about the rest of our teachers, but, but uh, <laughs> congratulations to you. I invite all of you to stand for our final blessing. And I do thank you for your participation in this liturgy as I ask God's blessing upon you. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and be with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And as we go forth, let us join in singing Companions on the Journey.